The Jailer's Daughter and the Politics of Mad Woman's Language by Doug- Douglas Brewster highlights the importance of the language used by one of the most strongly written female characters in Shakespeare's time. Shakespeare and Fletcher, in working together, were able to give the jailer's daughter the freedom of blank verse, and in doing so, allowed her to speak throughout the play in a way that was not seen before. Her soliloquies were varied in that she spoke of many different things all at the same time. This type of writing was not very common in Shakespeare's day, and it could be the beginning of a stream of consciousness type of writing that we often do not see in this time period. How was the jailer's daughter's language different from other Shakespearean female characters? There were many ways in which the jailer's daughter was different than any other character uh, before. Number one, her freedom of speech sets her apart as an individual in the play. What she says and how she says it are crucial to the play and understanding the time surrounding the play. Her dramatic ideolect. The jailer's daughter only appears in nine scenes in The Two Noble Kinsmen, so she must get her point across, and she does. Her influence on gender and sexuality. She often also freely talks of virginity. There are many different vulgar words the jailer's daughter also uses throughout the play, which no other characters in the play do use. The language is all her own. The jailer's daughter belongs to a certain type of social class, her base. She is the daughter of a jailer. She has no other identity than that. Her language transcends her identity and makes her the star of her own show. Her language is relatable in how her character was written. The language that she uses would often be heard in in a local shop or pub during that time. According to Brewster, more than any other character in Shakespeare's late plays, The jailer's daughter embodies change in both dramatic representation and the larger culture of early modern England. An important note, the jailer's daughter is always alone when she speaks to the audience. Shakespeare and Fletcher made it a point to keep her separate from the rest of the characters and actions going on in the play. Her gendered madness. Similar to Ophelia, Cassandra, and Lady Macbeth, the jailer's daughter's madness becomes something only a woman could possess. According to Brewster, that madwoman of the Renaissance stage often had, in quote, their madness is interpreted as something specifically feminine, whereas the madness of men is not specifically male. Theaters often depended on these portrayals of a madwoman, more wet, mad women, more seats in the theater house would be filled. A really important, um, really important during the, the course of the jailer's daughter scenes is the music and the singing. The jailer's daughter often sings and, and as her madness worsens, the singing becomes more frequent. The singing allows the audience to hear the madness and in a way gives them the opportunity to know what she is thinking while she is thinking it. Very important to note, per Brewster, male characters whose madness is meant to be pitied do not sing. The singing connects her to an old old oral folk tradition by the usage of common words, places, and customs. The use of popular ballads give her a place on the social scale of the time. Finally, some discussion questions to think about. If the jailer's child were a male son, would calling him a pathetic mad singer be less or more acceptable than calling the jailer's daughter that? Why or why not? Shakespeare wrote the character of Ophelia on his own, but the jailer's daughter was written in collaboration with John Fletcher, 
a known playwright who had a penchant for strong female characters. Could Shakespeare have been embarrassed to write a character such as the jailer's daughter on his own? And finally, Brewster notes, the madness of the jailer's daughter works as something like the play's unconscious, hidden yet present, unseen and at the same time powerful. How does her madness seem hidden but also present simultaneously?